I'm Karen Lam and welcome to Powerlist Asia. With the 21st century comes the rise of Asia and Asia's business titans are making their presence felt in the global arena. Who are these influential men and women who are changing the rules of the game? What is it that they see that others don't? What makes their risks pay off? I'll be speaking to Asia's movers and shakers in one-on-one -on -one interviews to find out how these leaders stay on top and in power. We kick off the series with a self-made billionaire who's known as an industrialist challenger. He founded JG Summit, one of Asia's most successful public listed companies. JG Summit, which bears his initials, is the emblem of his rise to wealth and power, which started as a 13-year-old when he peddled soap, candles and thread on a bicycle. Powerlist Asia speaks to the founding chairman of JG Summit, John Gokongwe Jr. My interview with John Gokongwe Jr. takes place at this four-star hotel that he owns, part of the eight business groups making up his conglomerate. From properties in the Philippines and abroad to food and beverage, petrochemicals and airlines. John Gokongwe's conglomerate, JG Summit, is one of the best performing companies in Asia. It's also the only Filipino company to make it to the Forbes Asia's Fab 50 companies, twice in a row. As we chat, I discover something intriguing about this billionaire. He associates his success with this figure of a boy on a bicycle. Mr. John Conway Jr., thank you very much for joining us on Powerless Asia. I understand that your symbol of success is really just a boy on a bicycle. Can you tell us a little bit about that? The symbol of success is actually how I started. Um, I started at the age of 15 during the war and um, bought a second-hand bicycle and uh, pedaled. Started peddling to all the markets around Cebu uh, with 30, 40 kilometers radius. When you start at the age of 15 with no experience and no capital, you learn a lot in going up. In competition, you, you're in charge of everything. You buy, you sell, you're, you're the warehouse man, bookkeeper, treasurer. So you learn, you realize that with uh, hard work, honesty, and perseverance, you can compete. And that was what I was able to do as a young boy. So as a 13-year-old, when your father passed away suddenly, uh, you had to carry the weight of your family on your shoulders. Did you at any point at that stage cry? I don't remember crying, but I remember the shock when my father died, the shocker for me. I don't know if I cried. I think I did, but I don't, I don't recall. How do you overcome adversity? So you've faced many failures in your life, um, difficulties, struggles. How do you overcome it? Forget the adversity. Just do your thing and it will come back. If you want to cry over adversity, you'll never do anything. What goes on in your head during the time of the struggle? No, just forget it. Like a business is no good, just drop it, you know. In 1957, you decided to start your cornstarch manufacturing business. I started in 1955, but the plant ran in 57. I was then 30 years old and um, that was my first venture into manufacturing. It was a tough one. It was, I had to compete against the biggest manufacturer in Cebu. In the end, uh, we, we, we made it. What made you think that you could have succeeded? You don't think. You just 
believe in yourself and uh, you see all the figures and figure out in yourself. At that time, I didn't have uh, a complete uh, uh, study. Now we have a office full of uh, you know, uh, analysts and all of that. I did it on my own. I realized that I can compete and uh, I did it. Have your entrepreneurial instincts ever let you down? No. Not at all? It's good for me. I love uh, going to new things. I love competition. I, I really love competition. Tell me what guides your business decisions. Well, first, instinct. And then, now, the last 20 years, complete studies, but I, I think there's too much studies, too much paperwork, but still, it's good. It shows your pros and cons and you know, work on it. That's, that's how we, we go into new businesses. Like, we, we bought uh, a, a drugstore chain uh, two weeks ago, a sugar mill. Was it that was the common factor in your decision making for the purchase of these three? But it has a chance of making money and that uh, it has a future. The important thing is the future. If it's only short profits, no, I don't, we don't bother. Do you plan to look outside of Asia? Well, outside Asia, I think we better digest what we have first, you know. But our branded goods, like our crackers, our biscuits, our snacks, they're very exported to even Japan, Korea, the Middle East. We are exporting a lot, you know, especially our crackers, yeah. How did you come to start off with the food business? I like to eat. You know, since you're my size. <laughs> the interesting thing about the food business is you have branched off into, uh, or rather you have come up with a new product called C2, which is a green tea drink. Uh, which is rather unconventional in the Philippines which is because it's not a traditional tea drinking nation. It's Correct. a country that enjoys its colas and its sodas. So why green tea? When I traveled to China, I saw them lugging all these things around and drinking. So I figured out it could be a good business. And I went to see the biggest supplier, uh, uh, the name of... Uh, Thingy, yeah, and uh, he was kind enough to show me his plant, and from there I decided that the Filipinos needed um, something as aside from Coca Cola and Pepsi Cola. You know? That's it. So you never really just travel for leisure. You're always on the lookout for opportunities. I travel for leisure, but in addition to that, I must have as business purpose. I can enjoy just just leisure, you know. It's good to go to the museum, to plays, to the beach, but at the same time to look at factories and new products. Most of our businesses are from my visits to foreign land, you know, all, a lot of our business. Like our snack, snack food, same thing. I, I was in the hospital in Massachusetts in 1954 and I saw a magazine selling uh, snack machines so I said must be something nice so I went to the supermarket and uh, bought some snacks I liked it so I contacted the, the, the machine manufacturer in Denver and uh, we agreed and he delivered the machine in six months we were in business you know things like that you learn a lot when you travel you know you mentioned that you enjoy competition. I love it. Why? What it's is it about competition? My blood really, you know, my system reacts better to competition, you know, because otherwise you'll just be sitting down at a table looking at nothing. After the break, how John Gokongwei started the biggest budget airline in his country. So I decided to buy four used planes. I started this business, and uh, it, it worked. So now we're the biggest in the Philippines. Real success is something you create from nothing. Because doing things exactly the way they've always been done 
won't create anything new.